yeah, we back. Now, some of y'all in the comment section yesterday didn't believe me when I said that. Yes, Tariq Nasheed had a court date set for today. Yes, he went to court to file a restraining order against another content creator, another black man who he said had him so shook that the only option in his mind was to run down to the courthouse, run down to the white man, run down to the police and file a restraining order against another man. But at the same time yesterday, the social media streets was on fire because of that surveillance footage from Talk of Bay in front of the Hidden History convenience store slash auto repair shop. Man, listen, I'm not even going to waste no time. We're going to jump straight into the footage. And as you know, as you know, I'm going to come back with the commentary. Let's go. Walk of shame. They just lost in court. Walk of shame. Look at the wall. And then they start threatening me in the hallway. Walk of shame. Look, they about to try to beat me up. <laughs> this boy bought a, he bought a Mexican dude that's 6'5". Two of them. Let me back up. Let me get, look, my lawyer laughing. He like, look, they gonna start some shit. <laughs> Bro, I ain't never been worried. Two weeks, you just lost the court, Tariq. Oh, damn. It's cool. Oh, wait, wait. He got, wait, 100, 100 feet. 100 feet. 100 feet. You lost today. You lost today, Tariq. You lost today. He only comes around when you were Your attacked. attorney Your is a great guy. You Your are not. He said you were a bitch. That's he true. only comes around when I ain't there. That's true. So we got you but you lost in court. So the judge calls us up. We get up there, man, immediately. Tariq and his lawyer start babbling. Your Honor, we want to reopen the case because we got new evidence. We combed through all his videos, and they're, they're so voluminous. We just had to go through them and find different stuff. And the judge is like, okay, so tell me what you found. They start trying to explain to the judge the stuff that they found, oh, this, that, and the other, you know. And the judge is like, nothing you're saying uh, pose, shows that he poses a threat to you or the well-being of your family. Then Tariq's lawyer says, well, we don't want him to have to, we don't want to stop him from talking about Tariq. We just don't want him to be allowed like within 100 feet of Tariq, any place of business or workplace or his home. Because, you know, uh, my client it fears for his life, is in fear of his life against this guy. And Tariq's over there like nodding his head and crying and wiping away tears and stuff. And so I'm just sitting there and, I, you know, me, when, he, when they're making up the lies, you know, how, you know how we are. We're very animated. So as they're lying, I'm like, man. And my lawyer was just like, you look, just chill with the emotional gestures. It, you know, that could make you look, you know, like you're unstable or like you you don't have good emotional control right and, and that's really what i believe won the day i really believe what what won the day was just the fact that Tariq showed that he's totally like he has no control over himself as a man he has no control over himself um and so basically um we brought we did bring up this we we brought up the Bucci. he lied and said Bucci bear is not about me so we brought up the video of him admitting that I'm Bucci Bear. He lied. That's not my voice. That's not my video. The judge asked him four times. That's not your voice. No, that's not my voice. That's a video somebody edited. The judge said, so Mr. Nishi, that's not your voice. No, that's a, and the lawyer, that's not my voice. We can clearly hear it's Tariq's voice. Tariq is talking in court as we're listening to his video. The lady hears his, the lady uh, hear, hears him, his voice <laughs> and he's lying. Then she catches the lawyer in a lie where the lawyer tried to say that I was recording in the courtroom at that moment and that I made a video in the hallway saying that I was going to defy the court's order not to record. Security guard took my phone and looked through it, said, no, he's lying. He's not recording at all. That was another thing. Then um, we, we tried to bring up the video of him slapping Tarka. Irrelevant. Judge said, it's irrelevant. I don't want to see it. I don't care, right? So what I want to show you guys is like, when you go to court, it's not like the internet. You're not at the. You're not appealing this stuff. You're not trying this stuff in the court of public opinion like the internet. You're trying this stuff in a real court. And what you'll quickly learn is first, everybody has First Amendment rights, so they can protest. They can go to your business, stand out in front with picket signs and all that stuff, and and talk, tell you how they feel about you. Right? Uh, remember, Tariq showed up to Vlad TV. And told Tommy Mayor, Mayor how he felt about him. You remember that? Same exact thing. Tariq has literally showed up to people's businesses, like allegedly, and like expressed how he feels about them. You know, so places of business, and showed them how and told him how he felt about him. So the judge was just like, and then then the judge asked me some questions. So, oh, so they so here's the here this was the big moment. Tariq and his lawyer produced a video where uh. I said I would double leg, double leg Tariq to the ground and beat the fuck out of him, right? 
the judge was like, did you say that? They were like, we have the video. So the judge was like, put the video up. Do you object to uh, him playing that? My lawyer was like, nah, play it. They put the video up. So it's a it's a show just like this one. Somebody calls in and they say, Brandon, uh, they, they didn't play this part for the judge, though. They didn't play this part for the judge. They only played the part where I said I would double leg. I was like, man, I will double leg the fuck out of Tariq and, um, um, and beat the shit out of him, right? They didn't play the part where the guy asked me what I would do if Tariq came at me like Tommy. And that's where I really got to talk for like two uninterrupted, uninterrupted minutes. And I destroyed everything. After that, she was done. She didn't need to hear no more. She said, well, wh why did she say that? I said, Your Honor, me and Tariq are hosts of call-in shows where our audience can call in to us via link or via phone number. Audience members call you. They ask you hypothetical questions. And it's your right to give them hypothetical answers. I said, to uh, everyone who's in our space knows that Tariq has a history of attacking YouTube personalities and in uh, um, um, independent journalists. He did it to a man named Tommy Sotomayor. Yesterday, he did it to a man named Taharka Bay, both of whom are prominent YouTubers. I said, we have the video to show you that. So people know Tariq is well known for aggressing against people in uh, other YouTubers in public. So they, so my audience member simply called me and said, what would you do if Tariq tried to do that to you? And I told him what I would do based on my martial arts training. I've been a black belt for four years and it's what I'm taught to do. I simply told him, <clears throat> I simply told him what course of action I would take in a hypothetical self-defense scenario. That was it. And she was, why does this man have that baby ass jacket on? Why is this man jacket crawling up his fucking elbow like the itsy bitsy spider? I mean, I understand having something that's fitted, bro. But when you barely raise your arm up to your shoulder and this thing is running towards your shoulder blade, your, the cuff of your, uh, your, your, the shirt was too small too. And then the raggedy ass neck of the collar. This dude looked like he just rolled out of bed. Dusty as hell. This man wore a too small suit. Ain't keep wearing the bitch. I told you, Brandon, he slapped Tommy Sotomayor and Tarka Bay, but he would not slap you. I was one foot away from him. I was one foot away from him. But I promise you, I was going to make it clear when I did what I did, because you guys were not in court to hear the shit he was telling the judge. If you guys heard the stuff he was telling the judge, you guys will understand exactly why I did what I did. Dude said he thought I was going to kill his family. And he's, he walks around looking over his shoulder thinking I'm going to jump out of any bush. So I had to make it clear that he's the aggressor and he knew what I was doing. That's why he turned around and got on. Yeah, we back. Now, first of all, before we even get into it, man, I don't think Tariq Nasheed having money like that, man. I don't think Tariq Nasheed having money like that because black men that's getting money, man, we're going to have our suit game proper, man. We're going to have our suit game up to date, man. We're going to have our... <laughs> Black man that's getting money, man. Listen, even if he's in debt, even if we're not even liquid, even if we got only $100 in a checking account, listen, when we step out in our suit, man, our suit going to be tailored. It's going to fit us properly. It's not going to be baggy. It's not going to be... <laughs> listen, the first undefeated sign of a con artist is someone who walks in the room with a suit that's either too big or too small. First of all, we already know you playing games. You on bullshit. <laughs> we already know you on funny business because you ain't even go to the... You ain't even get your suit proper for the event, for the meeting. And to be seen with the same suit multiple times within a two month, three month period, Jesus Christ, as a public figure who's having money, who done got like over millions of dollars in donations. How the hell Tariq Najid is an alleged millionaire and got the same suit game as a fourth grade elementary school teacher? This does not make any sense, man. But first things first, let's get into it, bro. Let's get into it. I stand by everything I said yesterday. Tariq, after today, please, please stop hopping on, stop hopping on social media, talking about you ran into this person, you G-checked this person, you smacked this person. Bro, you a family man, you an elderly man, you a father, you a husband, just fall back, bro. Just fall back. Stop antagonizing. Stop antagonizing the Caribbeans and the continental Africans. Because if you ask me, the root of this entire problem is the fact that you just couldn't just stay in your lane. You couldn't just stay in your lane. You felt like in order for you to generate buzz, generate publicity, generate attention, you had to set enemy targets on the screen. You had to put enemies to attack on the screen. So you made certain demographics and certain groups of people as your enemy who never declared you to be their enemy, right? So you went on a campaign, you went on the war path, you went on the crusade against certain groups of people. You were pushing certain narratives and false propaganda against certain groups of people, 
right? And not only that, you turn your entire audience against those same groups of people as well, not knowing that this can spill over into real life. I covered many events over the past months. Remember when that crazy lady went into that African braid shop and just started yelling at them and screaming at them for no reason, talking a bunch of nonsense that she heard from Tariq, repeating a bunch of slogans and catchphrases she heard from Tariq. And at that point, I realized now it was going too far. So honestly, I think a lot of this drama and failure that you keep running into is because you've made a lot of enemies and built up a lot of negative energy. And in my opinion, I feel like if you hadn't done that, then this whole entire endeavor would have been way more smooth and way more successful. The entire museum, the entire, it would have been way more successful, bro. You wouldn't be in court filing restraining orders. You wouldn't have to leave the house with two, three, four, five armed security. Bro, remember, years ago, you never had to do this. When you were Tariq Nasheed, the Pan-Africanist, you could leave the house alone, solo, dolo, no worries, because you know it would be all love when you step outside. Today, today, that's not the case. Today, that's not your reality. When you step outside, you don't know who's the friend. You don't know who's the enemy. You don't know if the person stopping you for a picture is trying to show you love or trying to set you up. That's why you on guard. That's why you in court. That's why you got the surveillance camera footage. That's why you looking over your shoulder. And as a word of advice in this video, I'm going to tell you, bro, just leave that behind you. For the new year, I think you should go back to 2016, 2017, 2015, 2014, back when you were just showing love to the people, when it was just all love when you didn't need security to leave the house. And besides from being paranoid, I believe that's having an effect on your mental health as well. So listen, you don't gotta take my advice. You don't gotta listen to me, man. What do I know? But maybe one of your fans might get in the comment section and carry on the message and bring it over to you. So it is what it is, man. It's your boy Nevercard, that's Elaine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone, peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, sh now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shoot. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour with it, wedge. I got business. This shit is an art. And they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play all my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so elite. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.